G'day guys and welcome back and g'day to all the new subscribers that have jumped on there's, uh, there's nearly 4,000 more subscribers in Fortnite so it's bloody amazing so thank you very very much for jumping on and following me along what I do here the last video I made this square ER40 collar block on the shaper um, come up really really nice yeah really really nice really stoked with it so I want to make a hex block now it's probably going to be a few disappointed people because I did say I might do it in the shaper but thinking about it for the last week or so I've got no real way of indexing the hex accurately on the shaper um, but the table's not big enough to put the ratio table on or anything like that. So I'm going to have to do this one in the Cincinnati with the ratio table. And the actual hex on this, like, it's around 50, 55 mil long, this square, or two inches. Um, going to make this hex one. It's going to be around 100 mil, roughly 100 mil hex, long hex. So when it goes in the vise, it doesn't cant the jaw. That's the plan. I'm not too sure how I'm going to go for rigidity in the lathe, doing the, um, once a hex is formed, doing the taper. Maybe it's a fair bit of stick out. Um, trial and error there. So, suck it and see and see what happens. Anyway, I've got to turn this down, the sums I've done, I've got to turn this down to about two and a quarter inches. And then we can mount it in the uh, rotary table and start hacking into the hex. Not too bad, is it? Get a measurement. Start hacking away at it. So it's measuring two inch four seventy, roughly. So need two inch two fifty. So we got about two hundred thousand to come off it. Our depth of cut. Okay. 
really want to break a chip like that, does it? Shit, plenty of sirens going out of town. It's not a good sign. So we have here 28 there to come off. Two thou up. I'm not worried about that. So I'm going to turn this around now and just take this end off. Didn't line up too bad. Get you down close. I know, in the Cincinnati we go. Right, yes, yeah, so this is the setup I've got. I decided I'd put a tailstock in this just to be on the safe side. This is the one I made years ago, a couple of years ago. Um, got a couple of adjustable parallels under here, sitting on a couple of parallels. So I haven't made a block up, a proper size block to match the center height of the rotary table yet. It's a job on the list to do. Uh, everything's aligned. I've got to take off 126 thou, 126 and a half thou, and that'll end up with a two inch hex. So an index every 60 degrees, obviously. So all I'm going to do now is touch off. I've got the DRO set for me limit, so I don't run into the jaws. Um, we're good to go, I think. Yeah, so I'll get touched off and um, hopefully this cutter will perform. And I still haven't changed the coolant, so I'm a lazy bastard. Crammed the head in again on this mill. It was out a couple of thou before I started. First thing this morning, come out, <laughs> spent about half an hour or so tramming the head in. It was out a, about a thou and a half in the uh, y direction and about a, a thou in the x direction. So it's not too bad to finish straight off the cuff. Be happy with that.
rotate this 60 degrees. two sides done it has left a slightly rounded edge which is what I was chasing to save the chamfering it later uh, I might poke along and do a few more of these off camera and you ain't going to miss much we're not saying that I can assure you we're up to the last side on the roughing out so far so good finish your shit I'm not worried about that just yet So we've got the hex roughed out. I've got a fly cutter up now. Um, I've already done one side here to get my depths right and my length right. Uh, the, yeah, the depth, of, you know, up to the shoulder here. If you can see that. So the idea is now is just to um, run the yeah run the fly cut across each face, and then I'll. I'll dazzle up these these rounded edges a touch too while I'm at it, but I'll do that next, obviously. But anyway, we'll just run around this now and make it all pretty. Absolutely super super smooth. Better than what I thought it was gonna turn out, to be honest.
absolutely beautiful. There you go, we'll do these edges now. I'm going to advance the rotary table 30 degrees. And that'll put me on the peak of these, these corners. And just going to skim them off just to, just to neaten them up. Because they've got a bit of a harsh finish off the, when I turn them on the lathe. And then I can rotate 60 degrees after this every time, that'll put me on each point. Absolutely bloody beautiful. So we've cut the top of this corner at so the rate table's on 30 degrees, I rotate another 60, that'll put this corner to the top, uh, buzz that one off at the same height, and work our way around and it'll be done. That's all six corners machined off to the same height. All the flats are now the same height so now all I want to do is I want to chamfer this edge um, I'm going to probably face this off at some time which I forgot to do on the lathe but I do want to put a chamfer on there and just in case I don't get back to doing that for some unknown reason but while it's in the setup I'll do it Up and run. Right, yeah, I spent a bit of time setting it up here in the three jaw. Got packers under each side so I don't mar the surface up. And it's within half a thou. I'm pretty happy with that. I did re cut the center slightly with a 60 degree counter sink, just ever so gently because it was a fraction out. But um, it just when you put the live center in, it did influence it a fraction, only a couple of thousand. So I just gently ran that that countersink in there, and um, yeah, it's running true now. So we'll leave it at that. So I can turn this down and put the 50 by 1.5 thread on it. So to bring this down to a fraction under 50 mil. Um, 448 uh, 49.8 um, I'm shooting for for the thread I know I'm working in metric and imperial but I've got around 280 odd thou to come off this this round section and it's going to come back to here somewhere so I'll be cutting into the hex a tiny bit anyway I'm just going to get into it and machine that off
thread. Oh yeah, I think we're nearly due for a scratch start or scratch pass and then um, gearbox is set to 1.5. I know the change gears are right so I haven't changed them yeah, from when I've done the square one. So, all going well. Everything should just line up. Fucking tickety boo. Set me dials. Oops, a bit heavy. Get a thread gauge. Thread gauge on the ready and uh, scratch past time. That's better. Dunsky. close it's close did you see that bastard okay it's bloody close it's, it's a fraction more See really they can use That's it. Done. So what I'll do now, I will drill this center out. It's gonna be drilled and bored. Same as the, uh, the square one I've done.
Got a bloody mess, I know that. Alright, yeah, I'm going to bore down as far as I can. Later on, I might have to turn it around, just finish the inner bore off, but that is absolutely red hot. It's stinking hot. I've used a trigonometry calculator on the internet. Um, to set the 8 degree angle this time. So over a 2 inch travel of the of the carriage. This indicator has to go 281 thousandths. This is a half thou indicator. So that's... 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 5, 65, 75, 80. It's a bee stick off 81. So close is not funny. So to me, that's going to be close enough. The finish inside that I've got boring this centre out is absolutely terrible. I'm going to do the taper now, regardless, and um, see if I can neaten it up later. So, we'll have, a, shit. we'll have a crack at doing this taper. See how much chatter we get doing this. Hopefully not a lot. I'll get it, you guys repositioned. Shorten that tool up and change tips. I'll just shorten it up a little bit. Not a great deal.
it's a better finish straight up just by changing the um, the angle approach angle as you can see I didn't overdose it like I did last time which uh, I was talking to a fellow youtuber he said if you overdose it um, give yourself a false reading so I've also got a do like in there too well as you can see there I don't know whether you can see that or not you can see the contact here it's contact all the way and there as well have a look at the collet See how deep it went in. You see we got contact. Full contact. So I'm, I'm happy with the angle. So I'll just leave it at that. And um, yeah, just keep making it bigger. That's it. Um, I'll be honest, I am struggling with the inside bore down the body of it. It's not real good. Um, bore and bar is not rigid enough. It's a 16 mil bore and bar. It's just not rigid enough down when there's a lot of stick out, obviously. Could be a future project is to build a decent you know say a three quarter or a one inch bore and bar as long as it fits down a one inch bore nice and rigid could be a future project not too far away this is a couple of times i've had this issue so yeah i'm going to get it out and do a bit of filing on this shoulder here on these edges just to neaten them up and we're done it done right yeah well I'm I'm really happy with this finish that I got off the Cincinnati I'm really disappointed in that internal bore um, I think that's going to be one of the next possibly one of the next projects is to build a a decent rigid bore and bar say a three-quarter inch bore and bar um, out of a bit of 4140 or something so, see if I can get a mini rigid not make it fairly rigid anyway see how I go do a bit of homework on it so now the other day I did stuff around with the rotary table on the Cincinnati and I built a small one as well um, this intended on being just have a go doing the hex and I just kept going with it really um, 
which matches this one here. And I was talking to another YouTuber, talking to Max over in Perth, and Max said, make one, make it longer, so it doesn't cant the vice jaws. So, that I did. And I need to film one of them as well. So, hence why I got the bigger one. This will still come in handy on pla in, in places and you know, times. So, I am tying the idea of making a long square one now. To match this one. So, best of both worlds then. So, we've got a pretty good collection going on now. I'm pretty happy with it anyway. Got to buy some more AR nuts now. AR40 collet nuts. Uh, I'm going to get the ones with the bearing insert in them. Apparently they're the duck's nuts, so we'll have a crack at yeah, see what they're like. Um, but that's it. I hope you've enjoyed that video. I do apologise it wasn't done on the shaper, but of the size of the table and the shaper, I've got no way of indexing the hex accurately. So hence what was done on the Cincinnati and the rotary table. Anyway, mission done, mission accomplished, another tool for the collection. Thanks for watching guys. Hooray.